Hello everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today uh, I'm going to talk about buying a chronograph. I'm probably the only collector who, who didn't get a chronograph early on in his uh, collection, but uh, it was just not there for me. Uh, your typical chronograph is, or something, sort of your iconic chronograph, I should say, is a Rolex Daytona, named after the uh, Daytona 500, which was a car race, and that's where you want to do some timing with that. Uh, however, I, I, I'm not a NASCAR fan. I'm not a railbird, some guy who stands by the, at the horse races before the races and timing the different horses. I'm not a coach. I don't have shorts and a whistle, you know, or I just, I really didn't have any use for it. And, um, I, it's, but it's something I think that would be important for having, uh, in one's collection. So, um, today, what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about chronographs. Okay. The first thing I want to do is to what is a chronograph? Well, as you saw before, it's something that measures elapsed time. And uh, so let's take a quick look here at this little video. Your regular chronograph works something like this. Here you have your, uh, either it's, it's, it's usually in a, a small sub dial where you have your uh, chronograph dial. And what you do is that you push the pusher right here and it will go around until you either stop it or release it or hit something else. It depends on the uh, chronograph itself. And then when you hit one of these, depending on the, uh, the one you have, it will pop back to the original position. Okay, well... Um, well, I was at home minding my own business, and like I said, I'm, I'm not uh, any of the, the kinds of people who would normally want some kind of stopwatch. Um, at my door arrives this, uh, this Casio chronograph. In fact, it's quite an elaborate uh, chronograph, and uh, it was sent to me uh, to review. And it's a quartz watch, and since I don't uh, collect quartzes, it'll, uh, it'll be one of those watches that some lucky uh, collector is going to get at some point, all, uh, who have sent in one of their collections for review. All right, so, uh, so to buy a, a chronograph, I thought, well, this ought, to, this ought to be pretty interesting. And uh, one of the things I found, there are a lot of them, okay? They're from the, the very most expensive uh, Audemars Piguet, Zsa Le Coutre, and of course Patek Philippe and uh, Vacheron Constantin, and uh, they're, they're, you can you can spend a lot of money on a chronograph if you want. But these are some of the more typical ones. I thought I'd take a look at. And they all look, they all pretty similar. They either have uh, two or three sub dials depending on uh, the functions and uh, the buttons they have. Uh, they usually have. Uh, two pushers and a crown. Uh, sometimes the crown has a pusher uh, within the crown itself, and you can see that. And uh, uh, here you have Georges Lacoud, Audemars Piguet, uh, Tag Heuer, and uh, Maurice Lacroix. And the prices are typically all over the place, but I mean, there's nothing about them that's horrendous. And there are a lot of used ones. There are a lot of really good buys on used ones. In fact, there's some used ones that they don't make anymore that um, that I found very attractive. The uh, uh, here's some more. Uh, uh, Glassudi original has and a good looking one. Uh, Gerard Perigo, the uh, uh, 1791. Um, Gerard Perigo used to have another one uh, called the. I don't know if it was the Traveler, it wasn't the Traveler, it was uh, Traveler's a GMT type of watch. It was called, I forgot the name of it, but they used to make another one. And you know, you can still find it on the uh, on the used market. Uh, Omega has 
has them both for the uh, Speedmaster and the Seamaster. And of course, there's the uh, El Primero um, for uh, Zenus. They have a they have one too. Okay, so I mean, like as far as I'm concerned, like I said, I'm not the kind of guy that was how oh, I gotta have one right away. And but I thought, well, you know, people have been bugging me. I well, want to get a you know to complete your collection, and it's not a bad idea. It really isn't. All right, so um, so the more I looked, the more I found out about it, and I found out about something called the Rock Propon, or the Split Second. And the Rock Propon I'd heard of before, but I always forgot what it meant. I said, well, it's, it, it has um, more than, than it, it deals with two things simultaneously. For example, if you had uh, people in a race in first and second place, uh, you needed some, you know, having two instead of one would be helpful. So let's take a look and see exactly what the rock drop point or the split seconds look like. Okay, your the next kind of thing that you have is called a rock drop point or a split second or even uh, sometimes a split dial. Now what this is for is when you have two things you want to track. Let's say you have two runners or two swimmers or two horses and you want to track both of them. And when the first one's finished, you want the your chronograph to stop, uh, but you want to also keep tracking the second one. Now, the way this works with the Rotropon is that, so let's say that you have uh, two runners and your first runner starts, and at this point right here, he finishes. Then you have a second um, beneath the first one that keeps on going, and then when it stops, you push one of the other pushers, and it's two stops. And you can see the distance between here and here. Uh, and then you set a reset pusher, and it puts them both back together, and so it looks like you have a single hand uh, going on. Okay, uh, now that we have an idea, uh, let's take a look at uh, some watches that have the uh, retro pump or the split seconds. Uh, Vacheron Constantin has, they had the thinnest one, from what I understand. Let me tell you about this. Uh, what I learned about the idea of the, the whole thing with the uh, split second, I thought, man, this is, that sounds, not, that sounds neat. <laughs> I still didn't have a bunch of a use for it, but it sounded really neat. But the prices on those things are astronomical. And there's a good reason for it. They're a very, very complex watch. And in order to have the, the, uh, the two, hands in the, uh, the sweep hands, uh, there's, there's a lot to it. And when they start off, they look like just a single second hand. And then when after the first one, after the first finish, we'll say, then the second one takes off and then they got to get back together. So there's a lot of really uh, heavy duty um, <laughs> watch mechanics in there. Let me put it that way. Okay, well, I, yeah, I looked at it as much as I like them, even on the used market. Those things are very expensive. On top of that, very expensive service. So if you take one of those things in for service, you, you know, you may get a bill that's uh, going to rock your boat. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I, again, I wasn't a big fan of this, but it's something. Then I heard of a third type of chronograph, called the Monto, the Mono Rotrapon. Okay, all right, so what's a Mono Rotrapon? Let's take a look. All right, this, the next one is called the Mono uh, Rotrapon, and it works like the Rotrapon, except it only has one hand, and this becomes fairly significant in terms of uh, cost and a few other things. Okay, so here's what happens with your mono uh, rotropon. You start off a race, let's say you got two people running, and um, the first one finishes here. Now what happens is that 
Oh, uh, you push the bottom button and it stops, but the mechanism inside keeps going. Uh, so let's say they, uh, let's say there's about a seven, uh, a ten second difference. Okay, so this one stops, and you have you push this in here, and we'll say that the second one stops over here. And what happens is that the uh, hand then swings over here, and it doesn't matter up to a minute. Uh, what the difference is. Uh, it will always go up to to wherever the second one finishes. So what you do is that you have some kind of recording when the first one is finished, and you can mark that, but you're holding a pusher in while that's going on. And as soon as the second one is finished over here, you release it, and this pops over there to it. Okay, well... Um... The mono retropon was, and this this gets into an even more interesting story. In 1936, Charles Jean Renard Beauvais of Fourier. Now, <laughs> I tried to find out something about Charles Jean Renard Beauvais, and there's nothing you can find out something about his, somebody named Beauvais that was connected with the watch company in the 1800s, uh, probably even back to the 1700s. But finding this, here's this guy in 1936, right before uh, World War II, has a patent on this thing, on this mono retro uh, poem. Now, it shows up in the Valju 84. Now, remember, this was before Valju was owned by Swatch. They were uh, there were a number of companies that uh, before they were taken over by a larger company. But basically, they they uh, they're now under the umbrella of uh, ETA. But so is everything else. I mean, not everything else, but Lemania and um, oh, Peso and a lot of other ones are. But this was way back when, not way back when, back in the forties. Now. The, the company, um, Beauvais Watches, they're ranked as a tippity-top, I mean, they're above <laughs> Vassaro, my, my Vassaro Constantine and Patek Philippe. They're sort of one sort of step below the Beauvais. And Beauvais has an interesting history, and in fact, it's such an interesting watch. I'm going to have a separate... Um, video on them. They are really interesting, and I'll talk about that later. But for now, what they did, this guy, Charles-Jean René uh, Renaud Beauvais of Fleurier, where Beauvais makes her watches, okay? He patented, patented this chronograph, but then it shows up in about 284, and uh, companies like the Favre Luba uh, came out with one. Now, most of the Valju 84s, or most of them, were cased by uh, Beauvais. Okay, so Beauvais wasn't out of it. The 40s were a very strange time uh, for uh, Beauvais. Their ownership was all over the map. Okay, um, as we know recently, um, uh, Breitling, uh, which had been owned by another family of the Breitlings for years. Uh, was sold to a some investment uh, corporation, I think it was CDC, something like that. But, I mean, the same thing has happened historically, okay? So this is what we're seeing now is nothing new. Okay, but this was back in the, basically most of these things that they made were in the 40s. Okay, well, uh, okay, so now I got my choices. I got a regular <laughs> of chronograph. I have the Rotropont. And then I have the mono raptor pump. So let's take a look at the unboxing and see what we got. Okay, uh, it's time for an unboxing. And this was sent overnight FedEx. And let me open this up. By the way, this uh, came, it wasn't taped up. It came in this uh, the box the way it is now. And now let me... Open this up and there's the bubble wrap and in the box everything looks pretty good. 
Okay, this must be the paperwork. So let me just unroll it here. This isn't, uh, it's in a nice little case, it looks like. Some of the ones come in these huge cases. This one is, um, says the European Watch Company Boston. Uh, Anti-magnetic shipping case. That's interesting. I haven't, uh, that's a new one on me. I, uh, I had heard some very, very uh, positive things about uh, the European watch company, and apparently that's one of them. I guess this is the paperwork. Let me take a look. European watch company. And they got the bill, and they have the warranty. Ah, okay. And they got all of the... All of the information here for me. Okay, that's good. It's um old new stock. Now what that means, uh this watch is brand new, but it's been sitting around in a corner somewhere for a number of years. And let's see how it is. Oh gee whiz, there's a um comes with a little traveling case. And here it is. My Beauvais. Okay, so this is a uh, Beauvais chronograph, make it nice and shiny, and we can flip it over, and you can see the from the case back, this thing has <laughs> certainly not been used at all by anyone. All right, uh, this is my first chronograph, and... Um, the Rattrapont is a, <laughs> is a, it's, again, this is something that is new to me in just about every way possible. And, um, let me get it wound up some. Oops, there it is. Good and wound. Oh, boy, does it feel good. It's got that wonderful feeling that uh, my patet has when I wind it. It's like, it's simply full of all of these jewels. Okay, and so I'm going to hit the top button. And that puts the second hand back to the top. Let me hit it again and see what happens. Oh, okay. It is now going. And if I hit this button, it stops. And then goes on again. How cool is that? Let me see. I'm going to count to five. I'm going to count to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And when I let it go, it jumps ahead ten seconds. All right, well, there's a lot to learn about this. Let me see if I can... Sh let me put it under the uh, magnifying glass here and see if we can get a little better view of it. Um, the light is sort of funky on it, but that'll give you an idea. You can see the uh, name at the top. Um, Bovig. Okay. Okay, well, there it is. Uh, that's my, I got a Beauvais, and I got one of the Mono Rotropon watches. <laughs> it's, uh, I have more fun with this watch. This guy, um... I want to take it in for a service, okay? I mean, it's 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 a it's a very good watch, uh, and this is the thing about these things. Uh, the back of this watch doesn't have a scratch on it, okay? And the the company that sold it to me, uh, European Watch Company in Boston, said it was new old stock in OS. Which means that for 70 years, <laughs> this sat in a crate somewhere with any other ones they have. Now, I saw an article in Hodden Key about they had, they were talking about all the 1940s mono Rattrapont. And uh, some guy was selling one like mine for like $15,000. Well, that's more than I. I wanted, but I, I got a really good deal on this one. And um, the one of the things, even though it's NOS, somebody uh, 
was suggested, well, maybe it's it looked like the um, the hands have been relumed. Maybe they have, um, but otherwise, it it just it's in yeah it's in perfect shape. It it runs. It keeps excellent time. And um, now now remember this. Even though this is the Beauvais, it's running on a Valju eighty four. The Valju eighty four. If you're familiar at all with movements, if you take a look at a Valju 22, you'll say, wait a minute, that's a Valju 22. But it's not, because there's this little hairspring that's used with the mono rock rapon. And so that, there's a little difference there. But this watch, the history of this watch and the history of Beauvais, and you got to find out about Beauvais. Beauvais is a place where you can get a sky-high type of watch for a really good deal. We're going to talk about that. Um, I think we'll, the pr next Friday we'll talk about it. Well, uh, this is, <laughs> now you know the story of me and my, now I now have a chronograph. So anybody who says, well, you know, you don't have a chronograph. Well, I do have one. And uh, this one's a lot of fun. Uh, the uh, one guy wrote an article about this. He says, one of the things about uh, this kind of, or especially this kind of chronograph, or any chronograph really, he said it's, it's one of the few complications you can play with, <laughs> and he's right. I've been playing with this thing and having a really good time. Uh, so uh, I apologize to all the people who suggested earlier that I get a chronograph. I probably needed one, <laughs> all right, needed something to do. I, I, I had a moon phase, set the moon phase, and it, you know, there's not much you, you can do. I mean, you what, watching a moon phase is like watching the paint dry there's nothing to it but this one you can play with and it's really interesting uh and especially with this mono rotropon in a split second without splits <laughs> okay um sunday uh have another review this is an invitation to subscribe if you'd like and um this is most important. I'd love to hear your comments. Now, I know some of you will probably say, you got the wrong chronograph. Maybe you're right. I don't know. But this was this one I'm going to have a good time with. And um, I'm, let me have your opinion about that because uh, I'd love to hear it. And uh, anyway, I hope to see you on Sunday. Bill Sanders for Watch Art Science, the art and science of watch collection.